Hi guys, welcome to Carpool Book Review. I'm Chris from Fever Books, and with me today, I'm very, very lucky to have Mr. Chris Hammer, who's written, well, he's written actually about four books, but two wonderful books, one called Scrublands, and another one called Silver. You want me to hold that while yeah, you drive? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I should drive it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Chris, tell us about your book. So, um, many people will have read Scrublands, my previous fiction book, crime book, and the protagonist in that is a rather damaged journalist called Martin Scarsden. Well, in this book, he's back. It's a very different location, but it's the same protagonist, Martin Scarsden. He arrives in Port Silver, um, his old hometown, a place he left oh, more than 20 years ago because uh, of traumatic events that happened there when he was young to him and his family. So he actually doesn't want to go back there um, but his girlfriend, Mandalay, who he, bought, who he met in uh, Scrublands, has moved there. So he gets there rather reluctantly, um, walks into the apartment that she's renting, and his best friend from school is there, bloke he hasn't seen for 20 years. The only problem is the guy, Jasper Spate, is dead on the floor, bled out, stabbed to death. <laughs> And Mandy is sitting just along and she's in shock, but she's got blood all over her hands. And of course, that makes her the lead suspect for the, from the police point of view. So Martin um, is compelled, if you like, to try and clear her name and find out who really did kill his old best friend. Um, and so he starts digging. And once again, a bit like Scrablands, the town starts giving up its secrets. But unlike uh, in Scrublands, this is very personal for Martin. One, because he's trying to clear Mandy. And two, he's being forced to come to terms with the traumatic events that happened to him when he was a kid. Fantastic. That was a really good outline. <laughs> You're obviously a little bit familiar with it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's... So just on it, with... Um with Scrublands and with Silver, mm -hmm. um, both brilliantly written by the way, absolutely love them. Mm -hmm. um, I thought when I read Silver that it actually was, uh, like you could read independently of Scrublands, you didn't have to read Scrublands. Yeah, no, th and that's intentional. It's, it's quite right. common with crime series that you don't have to read them in order. Yep. Um, and I've had a few people while I've been travelling around who've only read Silver, yes. yeah, yeah. and they say there's no problems. That that it's um, they now want to go back and read Scrublands, yeah. but there's not a problem. There's nothing in it. And okay. If you think about it, it is crime fiction, and in any crime fiction book, you do have to resolve the story by the end of the book. Of you've course, got to, yeah. you've got to tell the reader who did it. Yeah, um, yeah. Basically, so no, you can read it, read it standalone. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and do you base the characters on anyone specific, like anyone real, or are they more? Uh... No, it's it's really very much made up. A lot of people think that that it has to be based on real events or real places. Yeah. Um, both the towns are in real landscapes, but they're not real towns. Um, and the same with the characters. Martin is a, a, a journalist, rather damaged, former current, uh, foreign correspondent yep. with post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. Yep. Now, I was a travelling uh, foreign correspondent for SBS Dateline for many years, um, but I never suffered from post-traumatic stress. And, right. And he's a bit of an emotional cri cripple too. He finds it very difficult to um, form relationships. Yep, it's yep. an important part of the story actually in both books, a kind of emotional journey that yeah. Martin goes on. Um, so that's not me, yep. but certainly uh, in reporting uh, from events overseas, I did meet a lot of journalists and particularly um, camera operators and photographers yes. who, who really were messed up by things they'd seen. Yeah, okay, yeah. And, like, I mean, we see it all on TV, Syria at the moment and things like that, yeah. and you wonder how those people, and if they do get away with being able to film and see all of that. And, and of course, what you're seeing on your television is very sanitised compared yeah. to what it's those happening. people actually see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that relationship inside the book between Martin and the police, yeah. because you've been a journo and you understand these things, yeah. or you are a journo, um, is that typical of the relationship? Well, I'm not, it's very much imagined. I'm not, um, I'm not, I wasn't a crime reporter. Yep. I did a lot of politics and uh, in some ways 
my views are maybe a bit more based on, on that. Yep. And there's often a quid pro quo. There's a cooperation going on behind the scenes, say, between politicians and journalists. Journalists, there's a bit of a symbiotic relationship there. Yeah. But yep. certainly there are cases where journalists play a very um, preeminent role in breaking crimes open. you just got to think of, say, Four Corners on the ABC sort of inspiring or, you know, causing there to be royal commissions. Yeah, yeah. That sort of thing. So, really, I'm just trying to imagine there what would motivate the police to talk to journalists, what motivates journalists to cooperate with police, that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, so, okay. so, a lot of, lot of the book, to make it work, you've got to figure out the motivations of people. Yes, okay. Why a character is doing things. Because if it doesn't ring true, it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to storybook it beforehand, I suppose, and put the puzzle together, or no? You don't. <laughs> I wish, I wish, I try and do that, and then I start writing it, and then I get a better idea, and I end up throwing away tens of thousands of words and rewriting the ending, and you yeah. know, because of course, if you get a better idea, why would you use it? Yeah, because the yeah, idea, yeah, of course, yeah, is to course. get the best possible. Product, um, yeah. best possible book you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I like I read Scrublands and I read Silver, and I don't know how you do this jigsaw of events that occur early and midway through coming back and being used. I mean, it's just this tapestry that I just, you know, I can get my head around yeah. most writing, but and I can think, I think because I write a little bit myself. Yeah. yeah, I could write that. But when I look at that, I just think, how the heck can you do that? Well, see, here's one of the things about crime fiction. One of the problems is what happens if the reader guesses who, who you know who did it halfway through? Right. And the book turns into a bit of a dud, right? Yeah, yeah. Or alternatively, you get towards the end and the, and the writer introduces a whole bunch of new information or a new character yeah, to which explain the murder, right. and then you feel cheated. Yeah, yeah. So what I've done is there's actually multiple crimes and multiple storylines. Yes. And you know someone might guess one of them but they're not going to guess all of them. And I can kind of guarantee it because I didn't guess all of them. Yeah, and yeah. Right, as I write, oh, no, this is better to do it this way or that's better. Yep. So, so you, you write the stories. Um, there's quite a bit going on, put it that way. In, 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 in his book, yep. um, as well as that murder at the start, um, there's a bit of... Well, there's a smuggling ring. There's some itinerant scammers. There's a guru. There's a bit of a cult. Um, there's drugs. There's backpackers. There's real estate intrigue. Um, there's a hell of a lot going on. You know, drug fueled orgies on the beach, according to some reports. Champion the, surfers. Champion surfers. The media descends on the town once again. Yeah. Um, for those who've read Scrublands, the um, intrepid. TV reporter Doug Funkleton is back. <laughs> oh, Doug. <laughs> yeah, there is a bit of humour. There, yeah. there, there are spots of humour in this grim story. It's, it's such a good story, and it's written so well, I've got to say to you that, like, there's a lot of... Um, it sounds stupid to say this, creative writing going on there that I really enjoy. Like, there's sentences that I just stopped at and went, that are so well-crafted. I think one that comes to mind was... The school was so new, it didn't cast any shadows. Okay. Yeah. And I was just like, that just put the image in my head straight away. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I think I doggy it about 10 or 12 pages because those sentences, they're not a, they're actually not what you normally get in a crime fiction book. See, here's the thing about crime that's fantastic is yes, you need that cracking plot, but there's room for all sorts of other things. There's yeah. room for good writing. There's room for good characters. There's room for personal stories. There's uh, room for atmospheric settings. None of it is mutually exclusive. Right. So, and I kind of picked up this idea uh, with the great Peter Temple, who who's, was a crime writer. Yep. Jack, the Jack Irish books everyone will be familiar with. Yep. But his last couple of books, Broken Shore and Truth, were real cut above. To, to the extent that the Truth won the Miles Franklin Award, you know, which is Australia's top literary yeah. award, yeah. yet it was a crime book at heart. Now, he didn't win it because it was a crime book. He won it because it was a very finely crafted, you know, piece of work yeah. with, with, with a lot of questions about morality, but also some amazingly fine writing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's quite good, Peter Templars. And there's so many good Australian writers. 
and but, and so many that we don't know that are Australian. Like we've got these little stickers at work that we can put on the books that are Australian. Yeah. I think we'd run out of stickers on the first round because there's just so many. There is particularly at the moment. There just seems to be a big surge of, of really good Australian writers. A lot of good. Australian crime runners coming yep. through. So these people are just, you know, first, second, third book sort of yeah, stage. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it's a, um, and you get to meet each other, of course. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Really good mob, very supportive. Yep. It's not a, it's not a competition. Not I think a dog we, all, dog. we all see, no, no, because if someone reads a good Australian crime book, yep. they're more likely to walk into your store and say, love this, what else have you got? Yeah, that's which like is this. what happens, yeah. exactly what happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, so finally, the first book took how long to write, Scrublands? Well, probably about four or five years. Yeah. But I had a full time job. I was just snatching moments here and there. Yeah, so yeah, five course. years, yeah. but, but not five years full time. Yeah, okay. And the second book? Um, yeah, just over a year. Wow. And, it, and it's a big book. <laughs> it's a big book. 140,000 words. Wow. Um, but, you know, I really, when I'm reading, yep. I really love an immersive book. You know, something you can sink into and go yep. and lose yourself. Yeah. Yep. And so, the, so in both books, this one, The Town Silver, yeah, Port Silver, you get a really good idea of, of of the town and you lose yourself in it. So You do. You even do, though it's absolutely. a big... And there's another... I'll hold this up. There is a fantastic... <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. This fantastic map I in saw the that. front. I thought you are doing a George yeah. R.R. Martin or a Matthew Riley here. Yeah. You've got a map in the front. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know... This, um, I met the artist for the first time just the other night in Melbourne. Yeah. Lovely bloke called Alex. Um, only arrived... Uh, very recently before Scrublands from Slovenia. So he's drawing pictures of a cu Australian country town, but he hadn't been to one. So I'd say, this is what a country pub looks like. This is what wheat silos look like. Yeah. It's quite useful, because often when I see the maps at the front, I don't bother with them. Like, I look at them, yeah. and that's about all I do. But actually, a couple of times, quite a few times, I had to go back in yeah. and look at the map to get my... Well, not I didn't have to go back in to get my yeah. bearings, but I wanted to go back in to get my bearings. So I thought it was really, really good. So um, I'm going to ask the same question I asked you a long time ago in Melbourne. Are you working on another one? I am, actually. It's one of the lessons I learned, you know, <laughs> writing this big book in a, in a year, which is... Um, uh, you know, quite an effort. Your publisher would have loved that. Yeah, so I thought, look, between doing the final edits on this one and going around to and it being published, published and me going off on a, on a tour, I'll, I'll try and really get into uh, the next one, which I have. Yep. It's going well, and again, it's Martin Scarston and Mandalay Blue. Oh, So it'll be like the, th the third the in third. the series. It's a trilogy, yeah. really. <laughs> I wish I could tell you what it was called, but I've got no idea. I've <laughs> <laughs> got yeah. gold. Silver. Uh, I don't know. Um, so, guys, that is um, Scrublands and Silver. And Chris has been it's been great. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, actually, fantastic. really good fun. And um, both are in store now, guys. And Ma um, Chris has been very almost called you Martin Lee character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chris has been very generous and he signed some copies, so they're in store now. So you can get them in, in the store or at VivaBooks.net. Thanks very much, Chris. Thank Great you, Great to Chris. meet you, and thanks for coming in. It's the Chris Excellent. and Chris show. It is. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks, guys. See Cheers. you later.